Hi, I'm Alexa Ray Correa, and this is the Game Makers Notebook podcast. I am very excited to share this next interview with you. It is with Naji Jeter of Miles Morales fame. If you just completed Insomniac Spider-Man 2, you will uh, have him very fresh in your minds. Naji is such a bubbly, wonderful person. And we had a really amazing conversation about the philosophy behind his approach to Miles and how he grew with Miles and he reflects on how he's been playing Miles for a decade now, um, which is just astounding. And he's got a lot of cool things coming up in the works. He is a really creative individual and just an absolute bright light in this industry. So please enjoy this interview. Back in business. We promised to protect this city. We gotta stop him. You ready? Let's go. I'm all charged up. Looks like we're kicking things up a notch. We know what's best for everyone. Spider-Man, I'll squash you like a bug! What's the matter? Two Spider-Man, two top? This suit is incredible! Hi. Hello. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Love. How you doing? Good. Thank yeah. you for uh, thank you for sitting down with me today. I yes. appreciate it. All the the whirlwind of the Dice Awards and all yes. this stuff going on. You are very busy. Dice Awards. Yes, we are here. We are here in Vegas. We are here. In how Vegas. Are you feeling? Dry. Yeah, I know. I know. It's uh, yeah, yeah. It's the weather. It's so dry. <laughs> um, so you are you are Miles Morales. Yes. And you are no, you are nominated again. Again, this is your second nomination and you won last time. Yes, 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 yes. And I am so beyond grateful and honored to just be here again. And also it's just like, a, it's been a journey. You know, it's been a journey. I started off on uh, Disney XD, just thinking that this was like a one-time thing. And then now we're here and it's like, it's crazy, you know? Yeah. It's how, crazy. How did you, okay, so you are, like you are Miles in quite a few properties. So I would love to hear like, your story from getting like getting him the first time how did you get him the first time i was a baby i was probably like uh 18 turning 19 that is a baby yeah yeah i'm 27 now it's it's crazy but um we started off on disney xd and um we had three seasons of the spider-man just mm -hmm. going on with me and robbie draymond at first and um and i kind of just started off as miles as a 13 year old you know, as a 13 year old. So I had that real high pitched voice and, um, and just really going on carrying out this, this, this character that I, that I was learning about at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, that he was growing and more comics were being made, but, um, you know, PlayStation called me over and they said, Hey, we're doing a game after Disney went through their transition. And, uh, I did not expect, uh, you know, the trajectory that it has taken off to now, you know, cause like I said, we were just in the booth as some voiceover actors and just, you know, going along the scripts mm -hmm. and everything like that. I did not expect to ten. Well, as a kid, I wouldn't expect me to, you know, take this, take this road and, 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 and where it's, and where it's led to, you know, yeah. but it's been amazing. It's been amazing. Like I said, Miles is now in college, you know, so, you know, from 13 to him in college now, it's like, it's, it's a crazy, crazy journey, you know, but I've been loving every minute of it. I get to be a big kid again, you know, mm -hmm. I get to be myself. You yeah. know, that's the main, main thing that I've, I've really loved about it because, uh, our creative directors and our, and our voice directors, Chris Zimmerman, she, she lets me be myself, you know, at times. And they ask me, you know, our writer, Ben Arfman, he, he tells me like, okay, you know, what's the, what's the cool things that kids are saying in New York right now? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, you know, we get to, we get to just have fun with Miles and Miles is taking people to, you know, a world where, uh, it's opening a lot of new, uh, a, a lot of new doors for every 
every every gender, every ethnicity, every you know, every story that's in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because Pete, Pete's Peter Parker's story has been a, a universal one. You know, so yeah. you know, with him having that having that story and then Miles's story parallel to his, you know, it's been a great, great journey, man. It's been like nothing, nothing better us better I can ask for. Yeah. You know, because people that come to me and they tell me how, you know, the game has brought them through, you know, life situations of people, you know, and their families passing away or, you know, them just going through certain things in the pandemic. And, you know, it's been it's been a crazy, crazy ride. But it's hitting me to the heart now. Like, okay, I'm taking this and I'm, I'm, I'm owning it now, you know? Yeah. Was it, was it like this when you were doing it? Like when you started be playing him on Disney XD and then eventually you made it into the, the, uh, games, like how does, how, is it similar? Has it like, yeah, uh, he's grown, he's grown. Uh, miles, when I first started him, um, he was a brainiac kid in uh, in Brooklyn Visions High School. Oh no, I'm sorry, it was, it was in middle school. Sorry, 13. So you know, Maybe. I started him off super young, and he was a brainiac kid, super science, just, just into the science world, and just just smart, just way smarter than me. You know, how'd so you I, feel about that? Oh man, I was a little nervous. <laughs> I was a little nervous because I was like, okay, Miles has some. Uh, has some has some you know some some qualities about him that I had to gather in my own. So uh, Miles was like I said, he's into the science, and uh, he he took things to another level. You know where I had to learn and look up some certain words and certain you know formats of things that he was saying, and um, and kind of taught me some things you know in life. Mm -hmm. You know especially you know with me being from a single mother parent household and then him yeah. losing his father essentially. So it kind of, it kind of let me get into a world of like teaching him or teaching me things about growing, you know what I mean? With the mentally and spiritually yeah. element of life. So, you know, it's been crazy, but now he's in to this world where he's getting into his own manhood and learning his, you know, responsibilities as a, as a superhero. So now it's like, okay, I'm taking that into my own life. Cause I have a lot of baby cousins and nieces and Aww. nephews. Yeah. And they look at me like Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. I'm like, <laughs> all right. So, okay. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, it's crazy. Do they like ask you to do like Spider-Man? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my baby's uh, uh chase mace and elijah um and uh i have noah maya uh like those are all my baby cousins and they're like literally from age th two three to like nine now maybe and um so they're babies you know they're babies and i have a lot of friends that have a lot of kids as well too that they they all look at me as that as well too so it's a lot of it's a lot of responsibility, you know, it's a it's great, great it's a great, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you know, that's coming, you know, that's coming. I do. <laughs> so it's kind of like, okay, we walk this, we walk this line and we know what, you know, we know what comes with it. So it's kind of like, okay, let's, let's just, let's just ride it out and be the best I can for them and for the world. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because Miles' story and Peter's story is, is just universal. No. Yeah. Do you think so? You 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 say Peter's story is universal, and Miles' yeah. story is definitely very like, very much a touch point for a lot of people coming from marginalized backgrounds yep. who have maybe grown like there was a period of time when all the superheroes were just like white dudes, and now we have this beautiful like varied cast of people. So do you how do you feel about Miles' story in relates to not just being a parallel P, parallel to Peter's, but like kind of different? Like how mm -hmm. do you see them? Well, I mean, I grew up with uh, Toby Maguire's story, yeah. and um, you know, with Toby's story, I actually met him on a, a movie I did a long time ago called The Fifth Wave. He was a producer on there, and this was years ago when I was like sixteen or fifteen. Before you were Spider Man, yeah, exactly, oh my exactly. Gosh. So it was crazy how just things came back and came back and play. But um, you know, with Pete losing, you know, both of his parents and then having to live with his aunt and uncle, uh, you know, I kind of kind of kind of grew up with that kind of story i had a single mom and um you know certain summers i would go live with my grandma and just chill with my aunt and uncle you know essentially you know and i would i was raised by them really you know so you know just living through that life and then looking at pete's story miles you know he loses his his, his dad essentially and it has you know you know uh, uh things with his uncle you know so it's kind of like 
the thing I kind of find that's parallel with them is like the pain and the overcome mm -hmm. of certain situations that they have to face because it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard, especially when you have certain guidance from certain people, you know, and then you kind of lose that. And then you kind of wonder as you get older, you know, as I think as we all get older, we need some type of help, yeah. you know, with life, you know, because if we don't have that certain guidance, it, it can get it can get tricky. It can definitely get tricky in life, you know, where things just have to you 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 need you need help. You need mm -hmm. help. You need that guidance because it's it's just confusing at times and you kinda get lost in the world and we live in a world where it's just controlled by a lot of flesh and a lot of, you know, uh just adversity, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's kinda mm -hmm. like Miles going through that and having Pete as like a big brother symbol, you know, and knowing what Pete already went through and then Miles is going through it at a, at a younger age. So Pete understands that. So I kind of connected with that because I have friends as well too, that have gone through certain trials and tribulations of life and that have guided me through things, yeah. you know, outside of family. So it's kind of like, okay, this is, this is, this is a, a mentality I can really tap into and really own because yeah, I mean, you know, once once you tap into that overcoming the pain and in and, and the trials and tribulations of life, you can really tap into being somebody better for the younger youth and the next generation. Yep. You know, and it's super powerful when you really own that and you really see people taking heed into what you're saying, you know, and it's kind of like, okay, cool, let, well, let's take it to another level. You know, and yeah. you got to own it. You got to really own it and, and, and love on the on the next generation because that next generation could build a, a certain world that just makes this world better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. we all go through things and we all go through just 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 life, you know, and people that are watching this, I hope you really connect with what I'm saying, because it's kind of hard to really pinpoint things because everyone goes through their own their own thing in life. And that's what life is about. It's about a journey, you know? So, um, starting from just like the, the, the gutter and, and like the, the, the low of things and then really overcoming that pain and becoming that better person mm -hmm. for somebody else is the true meaning of being a hero. That is so beautifully put. Oh, thank you, love. Thank yes. You. Thank you. It sounds like it sounds like you not only like you talk about your parallels with, with Miles and yeah. how you had a touch points where you were similar, but it also sounds like you grew a lot just yes. by being in his shoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I was uh, recording Miles and I was still going through my trials and tribulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was still going through my, uh, you know, just just just, you know, being alone and being, you know, 20, 21, just living on my own and just. Not having that proper guidance, but having to learn it, mm -hmm. you know, and staying on that right path of uh, knowing what's coming. Like I said, I never in a million years as a kid, never would have thought I would be in this position. Never would have thought I would, you know, just be the one that's, you know, people are looking up to. And it's crazy. Mm -hmm. it, it is a little crazy. I thought, you know, the acting journey was going to take me to just movies. You know, I did movies with Adam Sandler, like that was fun. And, you know, I got to be a big kid and, you know, and just certain movies that I was just getting into in certain films and, and TV shows I was getting into. I was like, okay, this is fun. You know, this is great. This is, you know, this is fun. But then this is like another level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's more than a role. Like yeah. you have people wearing the shirts, the backpacks and just knowing like, okay, this is our like it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. It's it is it's a little it's a little it takes you back a little bit. It sits you down I'm like okay, this is more than a role. Yep. It really is. It's more than a role. So it's like okay, cool. Let's uh let's bring this role to to the great victory that it needs to be into. Yeah. You know? So when you see the kids that are wearing the the Miles Morales logo, like, yeah. do you, are you just like, oh, it's me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, to this day, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's crazy because I see you know, uh, you know, artists, some of my favorite artists that are participating in the soundtrack yeah, of yeah. Miles and that are participating in like just the merch and um and it's it's wild, you know, it's wild because I know they have kids like all of my favorite artists. They all they all have kids that are watching or playing miles, you know, and it's kind of like, Oh wow, this is crazy. Cause I listen to your parents and I listen to all these guys that, uh, I kind of grew up with, you know, to help me guide 
life mm -hmm. through, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? That I listen to music, that this number one thing that helps me out in life. And um, those certain people have, you know, have their mouth shirt on or the shoes or, you know, post their kids playing, you know, the game. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, that's one feeling I was like, okay, yeah, this is this is different. You know, this yeah. is definitely different. And, um, yeah, so it's kind of like it's the best feeling I can ask for. Do you ever, like, reach out to them or talk to them and be like, oh, no. like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. No, I, 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 I don't know. I need more, like, uh, I just kind of let things happen. You know, uh, uh, I'm a firm believer in God, so I kind of, like, know that things come back around. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I met mm -hmm. Toby. So it's kind of like that was, like, a thing I kind of grew up on was Tobey Maguire's story of Spider-Man. And um, and I just kind of let everything happen in 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 its way, you know. Like, I, I wish I was like that, you know, like, hey, 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 you know. But it's kind of like I feel like it'll happen. And knowing that they're playing it is more kind of like, okay, yeah, like it's yeah. kind of validation for me. Like, okay, this is, yeah. this is real. Yeah, and, like, they're not just playing it. Like, we spend – I. Played, I played all of them. Oh, yeah. I loved Spider Man too. Thank you. We we spend like literally like dozens and dozens of hours yeah. with you. <laughs> Thank you. And it's it, you. how did but how like to know that these people that you admire and you respect and that have inspired you yeah. are also also enjoying the thing that you were in like yes. that has to be like the best feeling. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And um, also too like you know sitting back in 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 realizing that it's taking people there is kind of like a it's kind of like an overwhelming feeling but you know you have to go through the through the love and the hate of certain mm -hmm. things you know so you kind of expect certain things to come and then also just embrace everyone's story because you know I'm doing certain comic cons and I'm traveling the world with comic cons and I'm I'm seeing people you know uh there was one story that kind of hit me hard um, and it was this family that came up to me and they lost their, uh, their sibling, their brother. And, um, he was a huge fan of miles and, uh, oh you know, they had his, um, his funeral based off of miles Morales. And, uh, you know, he was in his casket and, you know, uh, forgive me this is graphic, but he had his mouse suit on. Whoa. Yeah. They buried him in the mouse suit. So after that, I kind of really sat back and I was, it kind of took, it took me for, it took me for a ride, yeah. you know, especially right there. And then, you know, I was like, okay, this is different. And I kind of felt that, you know, cause we actually flew to Serbia. When we first started the Miles game, they flew me to Serbia to scan my face. And um, that was my first time overseas and everything. My first time in, you know, in that realm of the world. And it was crazy because, I, you know, I, like I said, we were just doing a TV show at first. Yeah. You know, and it kind of took off to this game with uh, my big bro, Yuri Laurenthal. I love you, bro. Um, and, he's great. Yeah, Yuri is amazing. That's my big bro for life. But, um, you know, just just having his guidance as well, too, with this game and just knowing the trajectory that he's been on, you know, it's been crazy. But like I said, we get stories like that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, that come up to us and it, and it kind of just sits us down like, OK, this is this is way bigger than what you know what we yeah. have it to be you know so yeah. we have to take it serious you know like i said what great power comes from responsibility yeah <laughs> and it's and, it, and again like you're talking about someone connecting so deeply with a character that right. they sort of like find they find identity they find hope they find right. strength in saying oh you know miles would do this miles yes. is this yeah and it's crazy because yeah like i said with that that with that one we have had multiple stories people coming up to us you know in tears saying that you know you've helped them through certain things and it really sits us well it sits me down it really sits me back like man because you know i've, I've dibbled and dabbled in film and TV shows, and commercials, print ads, all that stuff, you know. But this was like the stamp of knowing my purpose and knowing the purpose of life mm -hmm. and knowing what people need to keep them going. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because I was I was there. I was for sure there. I was in my room playing games while my mom was gone and, you know, just having that time to just waste you know, <laughs> not waste, <laughs> not waste, enjoy. but yeah, enjoy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, like just certain times you're like, okay, cool. Let's just, 
let's just let's just focus into this and it, it, but certain games like i said back in the day haven't i mean certain games back in the day were great but like nowadays you know games like uh coming from insomniac or naughty dog mm-hmm. you know they make movies now we make movies with these games now. So it's kind of like growing up, you know, we had certain games that would, you know, help us, you know, like I, I didn't mean to say waste, but, you know, I do. I enjoy know what you mean, the though. time. Yeah. Yes. Enjoy the time and uh, really just help us through certain things. But now it's kind of like, OK, these games are taking us places now. Yep. These games are like building, you know, certain genres and certain just things that movie movies now can't really do for us you right. know and you, it's kind of it's, it's weird it's weird we're in a crazy world right right now where a lot of kids are on their phones they're on their they're on they're on games yeah yeah they're on games like they're literally on games like these kids are on games and at the age i was on you know playstation playing you know games like call of duty Grand Theft Auto, all that stuff like that but you know mm-hmm. you know respect to those games but now it's like we're taking places we're taking games to a place where it's like you can build a certain personality and and a certain uh, spirit from it, mm-hmm. you know? So it's crazy. You can also have a, like, physical... The thing that brought me to games is you, when you play a game, you yep. are in dialogue with it. Like, yep. you're part of the experience, you're experiencing it. Mm-hmm. Um, talking specifically about Spider-Man, the, um, the great thing about games is not only are they taking you places, but it gives you a physical experience you right. otherwise would not have elsewhere. Like I love swinging yeah. in those games. <laughs> I never, I never use fast travel. <laughs> I don't, I just keep going yeah. because you can almost like feel it, mm-hmm. but where else can, like, how else can you have that experience? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I think the, the parallel feeling with that is, uh, roller coasters. Yeah. Mm. You know, that adrenaline you get from going to Six Flags or going to Universal or Disney World, you know, even, you know, you just get that fun of getting away from what life is hitting you with, yeah. you know, and you just get to you have fun and explore a new world. And I kind of feel like that's where Insomniac and and, and games like uh, that, that come from Naughty Dog take you, especially those open world games. Those open world games kind of take you to a place where it's like, okay, you know, we can explore, we can have fun, we can see what this is about over here, we can see what that's about over here, and then continue our mission, you know? So it's kind of like certain games that have the map or, you know, uh, have the, you know, the the guidance or whatever, you kind of see where you're, where mm-hmm. you need to go. Mm-hmm. Naughty Dog and Insomniac, they let you explore, yep. they let you have fun. And that's what I feel like is the parallel to, you know, a Six Flags or skydiving even, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you just get to just have fun and just let out, yeah. you know what I mean? And I kind of feel like that's where the swinging comes from. I love, I love this yeah. swinging so much. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's you can swing around the world, explore New York, like who can ask for some something, something better than that? Yeah. Um. So now that Spider-Man 2 is out yes. and you can like talk, I think the spoiler statute of limitations we're is done? off because it's, okay, it's been done. a couple months. Okay. I'm calling it. We're done. We're going to talk about spoiler stuff. Did you beat it? Yes, I did. Okay, 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 okay. Be okay, the whole, I, 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 the only way I can describe how I played Spider Man 2 yeah. is I snorted it. I sat yeah. down yeah. and I did not leave. You're laughing at me, I know. <laughs> I sat down and I did not leave my, my, I blocked out my whole weekend. I'm like, yeah. I'm not leaving until I beat this. I was so excited for yeah. it. So for you, like Miles also goes on a very interesting journey. Like mm-hmm. I know you have Peter with Venom, but you have Miles with his sort of his mini revenge arc. He kind of has these, these, really conflicting feelings yep. about what what to do based yep. on his value system. Mm. What was that like for you playing through that arc? It's crazy because <laughs> uh <laughs> Miles had a huge milestone to get through and to get over, mm-hmm. you know, uh with uh the death of his father and the killer of his father. Mm-hmm. You know, um he really had to go through like I say, I mean, like milestones are kind of used for like good things in life, but he really had to sit down and really, I really had to go through it because I'm like, okay, like, can you imagine just somebody, you know, just the person of your mom or dad, just, you know, just taking that away from you and then you having to forgive them and you really have to really mm. sit with them and face to face. Yeah. And like knowing that 
you know, it was, it was, it was crazy because like I said, we all have that certain pain in life. Like I said, every gender, every race, we all have that certain journey in life that we have to go through. And life kind of hits us with a left and a right sometimes where you have to realize, okay, how do I handle this? Do I soak and, and sit or do I heal and fight? You know, and that's kind of what Miles kind of went through with that. And um, shout out to Stephen O. Young. I love you, big bro, uh, who played Martin Lee. I love Stephen O. Young. That's my boy for life. Um, but yeah, so him him facing Martin Lee, uh, it, it was something that I kind of also went through in life because, you know, a lot of things that, you know, the trust kind of gets lost with certain friends and, yep, and, yep. F- and close family members and, you know, certain things that kind of get tossed into the into the rug it's kind of like okay cool how do I handle this and if you know I'm a firm believer of the bible and God so you have to forgive and forget you know because that's what that's what um that's what that's what happens to you in life Mm -hmm. and if you don't own that you know if you don't own that you're going to be you know you're going to be stuck in a place honestly and it's kind of how you elevate is is fighting the the battles in the and in, in the enemies in life you know because that's what the enemy wants he wants to keep you stuck yeah yeah in one place so if you don't overcome that pain and forgive that 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 hurt and build over that and fight it you know you're gonna be stuck you know what I mean you're gonna be stuck in your you know it, it's good to, to grieve and it's good to soak for you know maybe a couple of days but if you you have to fight through that like even with sickness you know if you get a cold or you get a you get a flu or something that medicine is that fight that's fighting your system to get you better you know what I mean so that's kind of what I kind of feel like with life it's like you have to fight you have to overcome that pain and that like I said adversity and just certain things in life that you you have to fight to get better you know so I think that's what kind of miles kind of went through mentality wise and 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 spiritually you know um you know behind closed doors I was kind of like okay realizing okay yeah this is kind of serious so I kind of put that anger into it at the same time you know had the mentality of forgiveness like okay like listen this is what it is but I still understand, you know, mm-hmm. where this is coming from. Yeah. So forgiving for forgiving and forgetting is is a number one thing that I feel like is a number one battle in life because like a lot of people can hurt us. Yeah. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like you know, if you don't realize that, you don't overcome that, it it takes you to a certain place where you have to gather your own thoughts you know and like okay realize okay this is where i am this is where i want to be mm-hmm. how do i get there yeah you know so then how do you how do you feel you personally mm-hmm. feel about the choices that miles made along that journey for him great i mean great like i said he 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 <laughs> he put his foot down <laughs> <laughs> he did <laughs> he put his foot down and uh he knew what his purpose was you know um he made it clear, you know, he made it clear with Martin that, you know, I understand what has happened in my life. I understand what you did. And I understand the bigger purpose of fighting, you know, this battle that we have against us right now as a humanity, you know, as as just a whole. And, you know, because we all we all are human at the end of the day. We all bleed the same blood. We all cry the same tears. We all breathe the same air. So it's kind of like, you know, we're all the same essentially, but we all have mistakes that we make, you know, and certain mistakes can affect, you know, certain people that we love, you know, and it's kind of like if we don't, if we don't make those things clear, you know, then we can't help out, like I said, the next generation that's, that's behind us. You know, if we really show the next generation, then this world could change if we really stay in that complacent element of you know just life of just yeah this is me this is what i'm gonna do like no it's not gonna work like things are not gonna grow we gotta we gotta we gotta water a plant Mm -hmm. you can't let that plant just start like oh yeah i'm gonna live off air like no like you gotta water that plant you gotta do something to make it grow Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's kind of like yeah that's kind of what 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 us humans go through and what life kind of brings us to you know yeah so you feel like miles has successfully watered his plants Oh yeah. I mean, he's still growing. 
We got a lot more. <laughs> I know. I, I know you can't. I know you cannot talk about it. I just. I. My God. How do you? Well, how do you feel about playing playing him for so long? Like you've been Miles for like ten years now. Across various media? It, 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 I, did I just, I'm sorry. Did I just, no, like, scared? no, but what's crazy <laughs> though, like, okay, so I did The Last of Us, right? And yeah. I, I played Sam in The Last of Us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even then, you know, Troy Baker told me as a kid, I was probably like 14 or 13 playing Sam in The Last of Us. He told me, once you're in this world, you're never going to leave. Like, he, I mean, be. he's correct. Yeah. I shout out to Troy Baker, man. Um, But yeah, so. That was over 10 years ago. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I, was like, yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, that was that was 10 years. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. But now we have a TV show of The Last of Us. And like I said, you know, maybe Troy did, but me as a character in that game and me knowing Neil, uh, shout out to Neil too. I love you too, man. Um Never in a million years would we think that, you know, HBO would pick it up as a series and then take this game to the level it's at now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, 10 years ago. And we just that one time and then they had a part two and then, you know, like we thought we was going to be okay, a regular, you know, call, okay. Wow. And then now, you know, Miles, me playing Miles, like I said, we started on Disney XD. We lasted three seasons and then, you know, Disney went through their transition and it was kind of like, okay. Uh, yeah, like I said, I did Miles as a as a young kid. Um, I was maybe like, yeah, 18, 19, 20. Um, no, 18, 19, yeah, I want to say. And just going through that motion of just like, okay, being just being a big kid, being my younger self. Mm -hmm. And it's thinking like, okay, cool, it's fine. And we're just doing a voice and that's it. You know, my first, that was actually my first real life voiceover job. You know, because I was not good at voiceover at first. You know, I'm Jamaican and I'm from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So I, as a kid, like I really, I talked fast and I had like a, maybe like a stutter and had an accent too, you know. So I kind of grew out of that, got put in speech classes and all type of stuff. So voiceover was not my strongest at first. <laughs> voiceover was not my strongest. It was just film and TV shows. Um, and then when Miles came, you know, I, his description was just a younger version of me. Okay. You know, okay. you know, just a young African American kid in Brooklyn, da 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 da. And I was like, okay, cool. Just tap into my younger voice as a kid and um just kind of went with it, you know, because I have family in Jamaica, Queens, New York as well, too. So I kind of spent my childhood in Atlanta, New York, and North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I was all over the East Coast. So I kind of like knew where his mentality was. And then just growing with that, it was kind of like, okay, cool, just tap into my younger self. I was like, okay, cool, that's fine. With three seasons, that was cool. And then, you know, <laughs> we took a break and then, you know, got an email and got some some phone calls made. And it was like, OK, we're taking Miles over here now. And I was like, huh? <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we got oh, to do no. stunts. We got to do all type of physical physicalities of just the character. I got I got in the gym. I was like, OK, this is this is serious. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And we got to we flew to Serbia. They scanned my face. I was like, OK, we're taking Miles to a whole new level. Yeah. It was, like I said, we were just in the booth, just chairs, 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 and mics. You know, we were standing up, saying our lines, sitting down, standing up, sitting down. So now with, you know, the mocap world, we're in the in the room like this and we have like 90 cameras around us and we're we're getting into the motion we're you know being physical we're doing certain stunts we're we're getting into the body of miles in in spider-man you know what i mean yeah. and it's kind of like it was it was a different different experience way more fun for sure you know I, I i was having the biggest smile on my face when they said okay we're back to work and i'm like okay cool Let's do it. You know, we got to put a suit on and we got to just have fun. Like, it's so much fun on a mocap set. It's so yeah. much fun. It may seem like it's nerve wracking when you watch the behind the scenes, but it is fun. It's fun. Like, it's you just get you, you run around the set. You get to walk around in the little jumpsuit. <laughs> like, it's crazy. <laughs> like, it is, it, it is a blast. But we do have our certain elements of just taking it to a certain place to get people there, mm -hmm. you know, and because all those emotions of the story come through, you know, our, our, our physicality and our, our sitting down with each other and mm -hmm. like, okay, understanding the story that it's, it, that it's going through, you know? Yeah. 
I imagine in terms of mocap, yeah. being a Spider-Man is yeah. incredibly physically taxing. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of we have a lot of stunt guys. Uh shout out to Seth Austin, uh Jasiri Booker, uh uh Ross, uh oh my god, Cones Cone, uh, you know your last name, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> and uh oh man, uh William, we have so many great stunt Courtney, we have so many great, great, great stunt people on set that help us you know make that spider-man element mm -hmm. come to life because yuri and i and and laura and i we we all have cameras around our face so when it comes to certain you know cinematic scenes of us being super physical certain things we can do and certain things we can't because that camera around our face it it can break, you know, and that costs us, costs us the whole day sometimes, or maybe like an hour or two. And that mm. kind of sets us back yeah. from our schedule. You know, if that camera falls or that camera breaks and I'm usually the one to do it. I'm usually <laughs> you're, the you're first. You're a breaker? Oh man. <laughs> it's all, cause I go like, I'm a method actor. Like okay. I really go into it. I, I really want to know what that character is feeling and, and going through at the time. So, um, <laughs> just breaking cameras. <laughs> when I say I'm the number one person to do that, it's crazy. So they're all be like, okay, Najee's camera broke. We gotta do it again. I'm like, all right. Oh, <laughs> how do you break it? Does it just like whack it off? No, 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 Does no, it no. Like... It's just like, okay, if I do it like a jump and I'll land hard and I'll, I'll get into the aggro pose or, uh, you know, I'll, I'll maybe hit against a wall or something like that, or slide oh my down God. something. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Oh yeah, we get there. We uh, certain scars on my on my on my on my uh, elbows to show uh, certain no little burn marks and rug marks. But we have fun. I want to do it. They're like, no, don't do it. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> and I'm like, let me get into it. And Bobby and, and Brian, they know. Um, but yeah, so like getting into that element of just getting just all the fun uh, aesthetic of just being Spider-Man, you know, I really want to get into that. But like I said, we have that camera around our face and it will yeah. just drop. It okay. wouldn't like do anything. I mean, if you do like a flip or two, it could like whack off. But, you know, uh, essentially, it will, you know, hitting against a wall or something like that, it'll just, it'll just drop and we lose that whole footage. Yeah, so kind of <laughs> like yeah, we got to do the oh, whole no. thing, and and you got to think about you know our other our other cast members too. You know we don't want to put them through certain things, so we got to just do things, you know, because it's like yeah. it's like oh I, I messed it up, and we you know Yuri did an amazing job or Laura did an amazing job, yeah. and it's like and ah. you're breaking your camera again. Yeah. yeah, and it's like okay, we can't do this every time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> how many like, how many cameras you go through? <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a that's a question for Bobby. That's oh my that's, God. that's I, a question. That's a question for our, our our cinematic team. But I mean, not not too much, not too much. Like I said, it's just a little screw that we got to screw back on, and that's about it. But like I said, uh, it gives it gives the best performance, mm -hmm. you know, because I really take it there. I really try my best to take it there. I really try to show you know the anger that m maybe Miles is going through, or the emotion that Miles is going through, or the adrenaline. Yeah. that he's going through as a young boy turning into you know this this man as as a as a young superhero you know it's a lot of adrenaline that can rush through your body and that can really you know help people out and really guide people through that that tragic you know situation that they're going through yeah you know yeah um you mentioned earlier we were talking about lines and you yes. were talking about how you how you were able to have some input in sort of how miles speaks what was your collaboration like with the writers? Were they very much like, okay, here's the script, and then you would give them feedback, or would you improvise on set? Like, what was that relationship like? Yeah, uh, uh, our first uh, we had a, we had an amazing writer Ben Arfman and, uh, and and Mary Mary Kenny, and we have a Mary lot of, Kenny. Uh oh, love her. Oh, shout yeah, out Mary. Mary. I know Mary. Shout out to Mary. I love you so much. I know Mary. She's great. <laughs> yeah, that's fire. That's fire. Yes. Yeah, so you know, like I said, the uh, the first game. Uh, Miles kind of came in, you know, just as an introduction and, um, you know, you kind of see what happens to Miles, but then Miles' game, we kind of get more into his world. And yeah, like I said, I kind of grew up in Jamaica, Queens as well, too, in New York. And, you know, Queens is a huge element in Peter's life as well, too. So they were asking me like, okay, hey, what's like the cool slang that kids are saying nowadays? And I had to call my cousin and I was like, hey, cousin, hey, uh, 
what are the kids saying in New York right now? <laughs> and, you know, um, you know, she gave me some some suggestions. Love you, Ashley. She gave me some suggestions and I kind of gave to Ben. And it was kind of like it was it was fun. Like we got to because, I mean, we like you say, you have kids in New York playing the game like, you know, they're going to tap into that. Like, OK, yeah, yeah, this is kind of relevant right now. And um and yeah, I mean, certain days we definitely have to stick to the script because of the story element. And then certain days we could have fun. Like I said, on the mocap stage, uh, improv sometimes comes out. Mm. If we forget a line or two, you know, yep. improv can, you know, tap into that emotion and kind of realize, okay, this is what we're essentially trying to get across and the and the point we're trying to get across. So as long as that point gets across. Yeah. You know, uh, that's the number one thing we, we, we try to keep to. Cool. I know that. Um, so I work with, I'm a millennial yeah, and I work I'm with, too. um, I, I, you know, I, I work on projects where we have characters who are like maybe younger. I worked with, I worked on younger characters before yeah. and I have worked with younger writers yeah. that I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have show something in the writer's room and they'll be like, Oh, like, that's not how we speak or like, oh, wow. I'd like to add, <laughs> well, yeah, well, like I'd yeah. like to add like, like some slang or some dialect or ways of, uh, ways of expressing yourself yeah. are so yeah. different generation to generation. Did yeah. you, did you have any, any, you know, say in like stuff like that? Cause you are playing a character who, again, you, you played him from 13 to 18, 18, yeah, about, whatever. Yeah. About like, 17, 18. Now, did you yeah. find like you had a lot of room to sort of play with his vernacular and stuff? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, for sure. For sure. Like I said, just uh just just his thieves in growing up because you know on disney xd it was just script 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 you know um playing him as a 13 year old yeah he was a brainiac kid and just super smart like i said way smarter than me so i learned things <laughs> from him and uh growing into the playstation world yeah we kind of get into his own element and his own personality of of you know the miles aesthetic that it is that that the well, that it's at now, and um, yeah, I mean, I definitely had a lot of say so. Certain things that I kind of um, realized that you know wouldn't fit for him essentially, mm -hmm. or certain worlds. But I mean, like Bobby and Ben, they they kind of tapped in. You know, they they kind of knew me off camera as well too. So it's kind of like they kind of just built from that of 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 what I was, you know, walking and talking like and just 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 his just his general just his general steeds and his aesthetic. You know, it wasn't too far because, I mean, the guys I work with, we, we've all been teenage boys at first. You know, we've all had that experience with teenage life and, um, you know, Queens, you know, we kind of realized like, OK, you know, New York is a big world and we have a lot of personalities in New York. Like you have certain states that it's one personality. You can tell where somebody's mm -hmm. from. Yeah. You know, New York is kind of like a melting pot. Yes. <laughs> it's yes, a it melting is. pot of a lot of, uh, you know, creatives and a lot of um personalities from different countries and different states that uh kind of gather together and kind of make their own in New York. So yeah, Miles is one of those, you know, coming from a mixed, you know, mixed gender, you know, his mom is Puerto Rican and uh you know, he has to learn his just just his values and his purpose in life yeah. of becoming his own person. You know, so yeah, he's finding it. He's finding it and I'm also finding it with him because I'm Jamaican as well too. My mom is Jamaican. You know, uh, uh she loved Jamaican when she was probably like 13 or 14 oh. so she kind of still has it in her but um but yeah me growing up like that as well too it was like okay well yeah i could definitely tap into miles because i understand his his world you know yeah. so uh yeah so it was kind of crazy how does your how does your family feel about miles like you're tapping into your, your yeah. heritage you're like well, do they like do they talk to you about it like how do they feel like what do they say it was crazy at first they were like okay nice another job good job <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no 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 it, it honestly it honestly, <laughs> it honestly didn't take heed to like i'm gonna be honest like i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i love y'all um but yeah i mean like at first it was like okay cool this is great like okay cool it's, it's fun this is cool what else you know what's next but you're spider-man like come on <laughs> now it's like that yeah okay for okay. sure now it's like that now it's kind of like oh this is this is a new level this is a new thing yeah. like this is you know because you know my un uncle they have kids now 
you know mm-hmm. so um I, I you know i kind of grew up with them at when they were teenagers you know so yeah. now they have kids it's kind of like they look their kids are looking up to me like okay you know that is they call me uncle Najee, but it's, it's i'm cousin Najee, really. Aww. but they you know they're babies so like they look at me as spider-man and uncle Najee and like all that stuff so it's kind of funny like it's crazy to see that and them really seeing me in this light so it's kind of like okay let's walk this straight path for them and um it's insane because yeah like at first like i said like i i honestly thought it too like okay you know after disney went through their trend like that was gonna be it you know like cool we did three seasons Mm -hmm. it was fun we had a great time with everybody that was on set with us and uh you know when playstation kind of took it to that next level and insomnia took 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 it to to that next level Mm -hmm. you know that's when people kind of seen like oh this is this is something for life you know we made time magazine we made cnn yeah Yeah. you know it's crazy you know team vogue too like a lot of things that we've hit that I feel like have been milestones that, you know, I could I could leave happy with, you know. I love that. You know. You said you were a gamer. Yeah. So what video game performances left the mark on you that inspired you to want to come do this? Mm. Mm. Like what are your what are your favorites? Like what did you, you know? Okay. I grew up on uh, a game called Def Jam Fight of New York. And that is yeah. kind of funny that it's kind of based in New York, too. Uh, but that was, like, one game I kind of had a stamp on because I got to see my favorite artist, you know, be in video games, you know. like And that was that was kind of fun to me because they were all using their, their own voice. And like I said, The Last of Us, too. That, that was in yeah. and Uncharted with, uh, with uh, Nolan North. I love you, big bro. Nolan North, um, Uncharted was, like, the first game that uh, – I kind of really like sat down and really like went into and really saw Naughty Dog's open world. And I mean, I played games like Spyro, Crash Bandicoot. Yes, you classics. Know? And those are both from the companies I've worked for. And it, yeah. it it blew my mind. Full circle. It blew. I was in daycare playing those games. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh my I was, God. I was a child like a kid playing Crash Bandicoot and Spyro and knowing that Insomniac and Naughty Dog you know were were responsible for those type of games I I just crazy but yeah Uncharted The Last of Us those two games right there I was maybe like well 15 16 um getting into that into that gaming element Mm -hmm. because knowing Mm -hmm. how they were made I was like okay cool you know I sat down and I really just dove into those games and I, I was a teenager so I really took more more initiative of learning like okay this is the yeah. art of a video game you know Def Jam Fiber New York I was like a kid as well too I just got to see my favorite artist you know have fun you get to create your own character that was kind of like a, a, a thing for me mm-hmm. but growing up and realizing like the art of a video game was bringing somebody into that world and that was uncharted and then last of us and you know the, those performances by troy baker and nolan north those were crazy to me I, I literally literally just sat down played them through overnight from one o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the morning just like just playing the game and just really engulfed into those worlds and that's what kind of really made me like okay yeah let's do the let's do it let's yeah. do it you yeah. know do you feel so you've been you've been miles for we already established like 10 years. I know it's crazy. I'm so sorry. Oh, man, do you, it's crazy. Do you feel like there's another sort of level of pressure being in the Marvel sandbox? Like how do you feel about being you know, for stuff like like The Last of Us and Uncharted, they're big IP now, but mm-hmm. they were coming from a different, you know, they're, they're not coming from this big empire mm-hmm. sort of, of IP. Yeah. So how do you, and like I know as someone who also is in the sandbox, yeah. I could feel a little bit of the pressure, but like how does it feel to be in the Marvel sandbox? I still don't believe it. <laughs> I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, um, I still don't believe it. Like mm. my friends, to, oh, we were watching uh, a movie. I think it was like the first Avengers or the second Avengers, and I was with some friends, and I, I had already did certain films back in the day, and one of my friends were like, uh, "Bro, you you know you know I think you should tap into like the Marvel films, or like you you're gonna be in a Marvel film one day." <gasps> Called it, <laughs> and it was crazy because we were like 
maybe like, yeah, like I said, like 15, 16, 17, 14, whatever, like one of those ages. And we were watching the first Avengers. I don't want to give my age away. I already, you know, I already did, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we were watching the first Avengers. And, uh, and yeah, and you know, when somebody told me like, you know, you're going to be in the Marvel films one day. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, like I said, I still don't, you know, it's still hitting me. Like sitting here with you and talking this story, like you saying that is like I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. It's crazy. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to like gather, like okay, yeah, this is this is real. Yeah. You know, because I've met people from the Marvel team and the Sony team, and uh, like I said, it's been a great, great journey because people from the Marvel team um, used to be with the Naughty Dog, or mm -hmm. you know, used to be with certain companies like that as well too. So they've seen my growth. Uh, you know, as just being a part of certain things and in, in, in projects that, you know, they've been a part of. So um, it's it's insane, you know, because we were so, I was so close to meeting Stan, rest in peace to the king. I was oh. so close to meeting Stan. Um, we were on doing a Disney XD project and uh, he was in the other room and it, it was like the president was in the room. Oh my god! Yeah, so you know, uh, you know, they had security and they, you know, guided him. You know, I think he was at that age, and they, you know, got him, got him in the room, and got him out, and uh, we were right there, like next door, and we like heard he was there. I'm, oh my what? gosh! So yeah, just just being that close to the man who made all this possible, you know, was kind of like okay, yeah, this is this is happening. You know, this is happening. So I kind of really just kind of take it with, like, it's, it's pressure. It's a lot of pressure, for sure. Like, nerves still are still there. Nerves are for sure mm -hmm. still there, you know, going through going through everything in life. And, you know, with, per, with personal things, you got to handle, too. It's like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but then that is, like, a reminder of, like, okay, we're part of something huge and and great, and I'm honored to be a part of it. So let's just fight through the personal stuff and then have this purpose right here just guide us through just the smiles and the laughter and the victory of life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't think the nerves ever really go away. Oh, no. Oh, no. But then again, I feel like nah. if, if it doesn't scare you a little bit, it's not worth it. Like you have to be just a little nervous. You have to be nervous. I mean, that's what brings the best out in you sometimes. Like if you're not nervous, you're comfortable and you're going to be lazy. Yeah. And you're going to give like something like, okay, yeah, he's, yeah. If certain people are not going to like you. Like, okay, yeah, he's okay. Like, you know, it's just a, it's a certain thing. I don't know what it is or what, what the word is for or, or what the word is called. But, I mean, you can't get too comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't get too comfortable. You can't get complacent. If, no. You can't. No. can't. Always got to push. You cannot. You cannot. But so speaking, <laughs> well, speaking of pushing and doing other things, yeah. we talked about this earlier. You also are branching out into other projects now. You have a production company. Yes, 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 yes. I have a production company called Too Woke. And oh, um, I love that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 a uh, it's a production company. We have a lot of films. A lot of uh, I want to tap into comics eventually. Um, we have music. Um, just just a lot of things that have to do with just the art of making somebody you know believe that they can do a lot more in life you know mm -hmm. with just just being involved in the arts and um like i said we all have a story to tell you know we yeah. all have a story to tell and whether it's you know like i said you 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 sitting here with me you know telling me certain things that you know are interviewing like this is this is part of your element of life of what makes you open up you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. too so it's kind of like we all have certain things in life that makes us just go hard you know what I yeah. mean? You know what I mean? I so it's yeah, kind of yeah. like, all right, let's, let's do it. So production company is what, is, is what I tapped into, just being involved in so much um, things that, you know, involve film or music or or just, you know, uh, just like just the entertainment world in yeah. general. You know, I definitely want to tap into it, you know. Um, so that's coming next. You know, I have music. Uh, film, cool. uh, books coming out, uh, artwork, a lot of things, merch, a lot of things that you guys are going to see. Just tap into my Instagram. Nice. And uh, I have certain websites and stuff coming soon. Just want to finish everything out, make sure everybody's happy. 
But you're definitely not leaving games, right? Oh, no. No, no, no. No No time soon. No. No time soon. Definitely. No time soon. Um, thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me. Thank you for having me. I feel like, well, I'm very excited for the future of the franchise thank and I'm also really excited you. to see what you do next. Yes, so thank, thank you, you thank so you, much. Thank you. It's going to be an incredible ride. It's going to be an incredible journey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.